Hey, what's up, everybody? This is a quick tutorial on how to overclock with MSI Afterburner. Um, you can go straight to the MSI site and download um, MSI Afterburner directly and install it. I've already got mine installed and all loaded up here. I went ahead and loaded the classic scan just because I think the new one's a little bit too busy. Um, but here's a quick uh, overview on how to overclock the 1050 Ti that I've got in my system. The first thing you'll want to do with any overclock is get a baseline reading. So basically you'll want to watch your uh, GPU temperature will probably be the most important thing to keep an eye on. And then after you change your core clock and your memory clock you'll want to take a look at that temperature again. So the first thing to do is go ahead and just uh, pick your favorite benchmark. I'm going to go ahead and use all benchmark Cazilla and get a quick run with that to give us a baseline reading. Yeah, and I'm going to fast forward to the benchmark. The only thing that's really important here is our final score. So once that comes up here in a second, we'll talk about things more. So now we've got our baseline score of 17,377. So now we can go ahead and change the clock speeds and the memory speed in um, MSI Afterburner. You're always looking at the core clock and the memory clock, and this is this will add on to your graphics card's boost clock. So whatever its boost clock already is, this will add to it. So I'm going to go ahead and set mine at 150 for the core clock, and add 150 for the memory clock as well. I already ran one at 200 and 200, and that crashed. So I already saw some instability there. The next thing I'm going to do is go to TechSpot's website. TechSpot has a is a great resource for graphics cards, and you can look up your core clocks or your stock core and your stock memory clock really easily um, you can see for the GTX 1050 Ti here you're looking at uh, 1392 for the boost clock and 1750 for the memory um, those will be the numbers that will be added to an afterburner so those are the most important ones to pay attention to here uh, I'm gonna take a quick snip of those with the snipping tool um, and just kinda set them aside for a minute but they'll be nice to have so, as some reference when we're going through the next step here. So I'll take a quick snip. I just want to basically, again, the boost clock and the memory clock are the two most important. Um, so after I snip those, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back to the overclocking performance page on TechSpot again. And they've got kind of a guide of what they overclock their cards to. Now there's no low profile MSI GTX 1050 Ti but the full-size cards should still give us a good reference point. So TechSpot was able to take theirs to 1665 on the core and 1927 on memory. So that would be a 273 megahertz increase on the boost clock and a 177 megahertz increase on the memory clock. Sorry about the crappy circle, but there's the numbers that we're adding to. So next we'll go back to MSI Afterburner. Uh, I'd already mentioned that I went to 200 and 200 on each, the core and the memory, and saw my benchmark crash and really had some instability. So I'm going to go ahead and just raise it to 150 and 150 again. Um, and you can save the profiles down at the bottom. Uh, Basically, if you right-click, it'll delete a profile, and then you can click um, the little lock to unlock it. And you click Save, and they'll flash, and then you can left-click on whichever one you want to save it in that spot. You can save pre five presets, and click the lock again to lock it, and then go and run another benchmark. So I'll restart Kazula on the same preset, and I'll go ahead and fast-forward through it again here. All we're doing here is looking for a number to compare with our original benchmark. So as long as you run the same thing before and after, it really doesn't matter what you run. You just need something for comparison. And there's our score, 18,191. Um, that is an increase, uh, I believe it was 17,377. So that puts us at just about a 5% increase over our stock clocks. So not a bad start. And the max GPU temperature only went up 2 degrees from 62 to 64. I think this card can go to 83 degrees Celsius before it starts to throttle. So basically from here on out it would just be trial and error. We're a little bit closer to that max core clock already than we are the memory clock. 
So I would probably, my next step if I wanted to fine tune it some more would be to go probably 15 to 20 megahertz on the core clock and then probably about 10 at a time on the memory clock. And then just run a benchmark each time and test for stability and see what kind of performance gains you get. And that's it. Thanks for uh, watching and post any questions or comments below.